and welcome to vlog number 23, I think. 23. 23. So welcome to... Why do I get so disappointed when I get things wrong? It's like, it's not the end of the world. Hello and welcome to vlog number 23. And it is the day after Crackon. We were out last night till quite late. I'm quite tired, but I'm gonna try to do as much as I can today. It's Sunday, which is meant to be a kind of a rest day, so as well as trying to do as much as I can, I also want to do as little as I can, if that makes any sense at all. I've edited yesterday's vlog, I've uploaded it, or scheduled it, and let's see what the rest of the day has in store for me. I'm gonna see if I can try pre-record Tuesday's cover, which will more than likely be Tom O'Dell's song, Constellations, which I am absolutely in love with at the moment. It's such a such an amazing song. So my housemate Alex is gone to a little and I've realized I need to get food as well. So I'm gonna go join him. Uh, I think I'm gonna bring the GoPro rather than bringing this big heavy camera, um, just because I still haven't gotten used to vlogging in, in public properly yet. So we'll see how it goes anyway. So, I don't know if you can see me or not because unlike my Canon, this does not have a flip out screen and I know I could connect it to my phone but I'm being rather lazy so I've no idea if you can see me. I'm just putting on my shoes and heading off to Lidl. Ah, I can see it. For what? Oh, <laughs> So here's all the shit I'm after getting. Um, I was meant to get a proper meal, but I managed to get two bags of Doritos, fake Doritos, shit for digesters, and uh, Only I would manage to do something so stupid. I had everything hooked up, my focus right, and it's out of focus. Ironically, my focus right is out of focus. And I had it hooked up to my laptop, and then I realized it's stuck in my camera lead which is annoying so I have to unplug everything end all the sessions and hopefully restart them and hopefully all my stuff is still there and it doesn't crash relaunching Pro Tools yes I don't have MIDI devices connected blah 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 it's fun for Louie in the background again and here we go this is my project and I shall start recording it now so a lot of you often ask what do I record on and I'm gonna explain it now so over here we have one of the most important pieces of gear. So here's the microphone, this is my beauty. I got this while I was over in the States and it's an Aston Spirit and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous microphone. And it's pretty cheap too and I would definitely highly recommend it. It's got this kind of really cool, almost vintage, I don't know, it's just a really cool looking microphone. Next we have this, which is my Korg SV1, as you can see. Um, yeah, this is the 88 key version, the big word version. I love this keyboard. I absolutely adore this keyboard and it has some great sounds on it. However, I've really realized that it has some downsides. The biggest problem I have with this keyboard, even though I don't really have that many problems with it, I love it, it just feels amazing to play and stuff like that and the sounds are pretty cool. But I just, I got the 88 key version and it's just too, it's just too big. I love having an 88 key keyboard, that's amazing, but it's too big and I will kind of demonstrate how. Um, for one, there's there's not much space in my room here in Dublin. It's a pretty small room. I'm not going to show you all of it because it's in an absolute mess, as it always is. I'm not even going to try and pretend that I have my room clean the whole time. But there's that problem and there's also the problem of bringing it somewhere. Luckily, when I put the seats down in my car, it fits in my car perfectly. Um, the problems lie, however, it is pretty damn difficult to get a case for this. Hence why I still don't have a case, and whenever I actually bring this to a gig, I kind of like wrap it in a blanket, which probably isn't the safest of options for carrying a keyboard around. Number two, this thing weighs more than 20 kilograms. Now, I live in a three-story house, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of demonstrate this. 
I live in a three story house. And there are the stairs. Now we have, I'm trying to think, two sets of stairs. One to get from downstairs to the middle floor and one to get up here. And it's pretty damn narrow. I'm trying to get this thing downstairs on my own whenever I have a gig is an absolute nightmare. And I, I'm not even trying to exaggerate. I'm not trying to complain or moan about this. It is really damn difficult. It means like I have to tilt the keyboard up kind of vertically. And the keyboard is 20, 20 kilograms. That's not the easiest thing to do. So yes, there are a few scratches on it, which pain me. They really do pain me. Then when I get to gigs, I have to then unload them, unload the keyboard. And unloading the keyboard is the next issue because I have to make sure there's parking right outside the venue because I can't carry this thing for like hundreds of meters as I could do for a guitar and I also couldn't and I also could I also would not be able to bring this thing through any closed door so I have to make sure there's someone there to hold the doors and all this um, which is yeah it's it's, it's less than ideal. It was way easier when I was just playing acoustic guitar. So that brings us to the laptop and I have one of these typical grey things. This is of course my 2015 MacBook Pro 15 inch which I got new I think two months ago or so. I think I got it in April and yeah I love it. It's in a kind of a bit of a clear case because Obviously, I bring I bring this thing to gigs whenever I'm playing, and I don't really I don't like getting myself scratched. Then I have this, which I hate. This is my eye lock for using Pro Tools. This focusing really isn't going well. My focus ring here is broken on this lens. And then, last but not least, we have the newest addition to the family, which is this. This is my Fender Classic Player 60s. It's I think it's Classic Player. Yeah, Classic Player 60s um, Stratocaster, which is basically a Mexican-made Stratocaster with all custom shop parts, and it's made to probably the best standard of any Mexican guitar. Right? Reading reviews, it's meant to be better than a lot of the, even the American standards. It's meant to be better than a lot of them. And it's just awesome, it has all the custom shop parts, so it's custom shop body, custom shop um, 69 pickups, custom shop bridge, um, there you have somewhere, if your face can focus, oh, that was not a good sound, as I said my, my focus ring is broken on this, and yeah, I love this thing, it just sounds so sweet. So with regards to what I do when I play live, I, a lot of the time I use that keyboard and I'm now starting to use that guitar um, transitioning over from the acoustic guitar to that electric guitar and what I will do is if I'm using the keyboard I will run the keyboard independently using its own sounds but I will also rewire it through the Thunderbolt, through the laptop or through the Focusrite, through the laptop and then through uh, Ableton Live through which I will do a lot of effects processing stuff like that and the same with the guitar because rather than having to bring around an amplifier and all those stuff um, it's a lot, a lot easier to bring my laptop which I'm gonna have anyway and I'm gonna do a lot of the kind of chorus effects processing on the laptop beforehand have all those saved in a template and then for each song I can quickly change because I know what I want for each song which is really really handy and it also means carry around the hand the whole time unless I'm playing a really gig, really gig big, really big gig where I feel that I need an amp instead. So obviously there are a few other bits and pieces like I have a Sennheiser E935 mic which I always use for any gig. I don't let people give me their other mics because I find it disgusting to use other people's mics because people have spat on them, licked them and it's just, I just really don't like that. And I also use it because it suits my voice better than any Shure SM58 or anything like that. It's just a lot clearer microphone and I just love it and it's just it's just sm so small and handy I can just bring it around. It doesn't bother me that I have it in my bag and I can just bring it to Germany whenever I need it. So I was just rehearsing for doing my next cover on 
my piano and I'm gonna do a bit of a different setup don't worry that's just my guitar bag and stuff on the bed and I'm gonna do a bit of a different setup this time I know there's wires here but I'm probably gonna put the camera somewhere near here close the curtains have lights over there and then literally look at me from this angle um, where I'm literally in front of the piano as so I know the light behind me is really fucking things up but I have the, ca have the camera there and I mean going this way whereas normally the camera is about here and it's going this way so it's gonna be a bit different and it's gonna be weird because I'm gonna to have to have my laptop screen out in front of me to be able to actually record things um, I know you can't see me no 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 that shit. <laughs> so myself, Alex and Simon went out for a few drinks and we went and got food and I'm after getting the foreign one and I'm going to devour it but also gonna die afterwards. So that was it for yet another daily vlog. I hope you liked it. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe and all that shit. That typical shit. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again as always tomorrow. Bye bye.